reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? He said to them, Amen, Amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I am him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I am life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still die, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. We are all here this morning because we have one thing in common, and that is the fact that our Heavenly Father calls us here. He calls us here to His Son, Jesus Christ, who is the Savior of the world, who takes away the sins of the world. He is the Good Shepherd, the Merciful Redeemer. He redeems mankind with his holy and unblemished and perfect sacrifice at Calvary. And that very same sacrifice at Calvary is represented here on the altar in an unbloody manner and being applied to the blessed repose of the soul of my father, Robert, Philip, Maria, Joseph, Sukarno. Our Lord is the one mediator between God and men, living in deceit. Nothing outdo him. Nothing outdo his works. Nothing and no one 
is greater than he, the Holy Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Nothing, no one. He is the one who grants those who have died in his friendship rest and rest eternally. His mercy and his power is extended to mankind, especially those baptized, ministerial priests and royal priests, particularly, and so that we may choose out of our free will to participate with the Lord in the work of salvation, sanctification, and even purification not only for ourselves but for others. Our dear Lord redeems God. He atones for his sins. He is the one who makes perfect and complete reparation of all of his sins. He prays for God to the Father when he was here on earth. He prayed to the Father when he was dying. He continues his prayer before the Father. Without Jesus, my Father, or any of us, is not he. The one thing that my Father taught me a great deal was the importance of praying. He was not explicitly teaching me but more of teaching me by his own example. This is what Jesus did very often, and sometimes all night, praying to the Father. This morning, the Lord brought me to remember this little beat-up book that the Father had with him wherever he went. And he was the Lord moved into the corner beginning of the parents of 
priest's prayer group, group and the feast of our daily Lord's during the year for priests. He prayed a lot also for the souls who have died. Again, believing priests and bishops. I remember one time he told me this his experience one day. He went to the cemetery and he visited his former spiritual director who had died, Father Thomas Brack, one of the Marymount's fathers. And he was praying much then, and he was in the priest and religious spot of the cemetery. And he told me that he met someone while there, while praying there. But he didn't know where this man came from, he didn't know where this man was. And he didn't see him shortly after he talked to him. And the only thing this man said to my dad was, keep on doing what you're doing. He didn't really understand what that meant. Keep on doing what you do. And <clears throat> praying for those who have died is a spiritual work of mercy. We gain merit from doing it. Again, as I said at the beginning, no one outdo our Lord Jesus Christ. We only participate in Him in this great work. So it's our work, that's why you and I want to do, praying for those who have died. Because they really greatly need our assistance, rely on our assistance, and they still need the prayers. And one of the greatest assistance we can ever do for them is to assist the masses like what we are doing. Or to participate in Mass and for us priests to offer Mass for those who have died and for, for the lay people who can request Masses. This is one thing that my dad wants to do also. Once a year, we just make a list. My mom's name, my brother's name, myself, and certain individuals, and certain individuals who have died, request Masses for them. This is something that he was regularly until he declined, where it was difficult for him to remember anything. And again, our, we heard what our Lord said, He is the bread of life. Anyone who eats the flesh of the Son of Man and drinks his blood has eternal life and will raise him on the last day. I want to share a little experience I had on the day Chapel, and the chapel is a multi-use chapel. 
Protestants, Jewish and also Muslims even, and I, nobody was there. It's like, well, I'm just going to pray a chapel to my mercy. So I started praying for my dad and my connections were very, very tight, very short. Got on that day, and then a gentleman came in the door, went in the side, started unlocking the door of this quote unquote closet. And I came up to him, introduced myself, and find out who he was, and I'm not that he's the assistant of the chapel. And told my situation, and he told me, there's mass stuff here. So, with God's grace, I was able to offer mass right there in the chapel and made it to my convention. And I didn't, uh, I don't know if Father Don, I'm sure Father Don remembers this. He and I made a promise when we were in the early And, and uh, he remembers. Good. We made a promise. Whoever died first, we promised that we would offer the Mass immediately, as soon as we were able to get to the altar. So, in the airport, I was thinking about that. Again, nothing unto Christ's perfect sacrifice at Calvary, which is represented here in an unbloody manner. The sacrifice is not repeated again and again, but it's the one and same sacrifice our Lord offers to the Father. And we can pray to them with the Christ, so why not? Why not? But we ought to keep on praying for them. Just in case they still need it. Just in case they still need our prayers to get to their eternal reward in the heaven of the Lord. Our prayers will never be wasted. If they're in heaven already, our prayers will not get wasted. St. Thomas Aquinas, doctor of the church, teaches about accidental glory. What that's referring to is how our prayers for the dead will never get wasted, but actually contributes to the one we're praying for, even when the person is already in heaven. He calls this accidental glory. This basically means that here we are praying for my father, and my father is already in heaven. Our prayers, the mass is being offered by priests and bishops, Sacrifice, penance, and fasting we offer for him, these will give him two things. One is his intimacy with God will increase, and also the, um, his intercessory power is also granted to him. So again, never wasted, but God in his mercy, his awesome design, would grant his accidental glory for those. God and also increase in his intercessory power. So the lesson is always pray for the dead. Always pray for the dead as we help them in their glory even. Not, again, we're not doing the glory. It's Christ. He's the one. We just participate with him. As I said, we are all here this morning because we have one thing in common. That one thing in common is the fact that our Heavenly Father calls us here. He calls us here to the Son Jesus Christ, particularly to participate with our Lord and Savior, to intercede for my Father and all those who have died. And I thank you greatly, and my mom and my brothers and my whole family express our gratitude for every one of you who are here and praying for him. And may the merciful Redeemer bless us all living in his seat through our participation with him in his life, that we may be with him in the next.
in baptism, my father Robert Joseph received the light of Christ, scattered the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord.
Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice we offer you for my Father. Grant him everlasting joy in the land of the living, and unite us with him in the happiness of the saints. Through Christ our Lord.
certain classes and leave the child to his disciples say, Take this, all of you, and bring it from me. For this is the child of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and save all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant the peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
May participation in this heavenly sacrament obtain perpetual life and rest for my Father. We pray, O Lord, and bring us along with Him to the fullness of your everlasting glory. Through Christ our Lord.
May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Take our brother to this place of prayer. 